they had a quarter, and 12 people gave her one. In addition to quarters, Dawn was offered cell phones, dollars. I give you a dollar, I give you a quarter. Even men who didn't have a quarter all stopped for Dawn and offered help. Why don't we go to the restaurant and they might change it? Sir, I'm sorry. Could I borrow a quarter from you? I have left my cell phone home and I need to make a phone call. Would a good-looking man also have an easy time of it? Neil stopped both men and women with equal success among the sexes. He approached 10 people, garnering eight quarters. I'm actually an actor. I have a job on the line. I'm like, oh, I need a quarter. Excuse me, sir. Can I, can I have a quarter? I have to make a phone call. And senior citizen Trudy also had an easy time. Thank you very much, sir. Even a guy handing out flyers feels badly for Trudy and offers without being asked a quarter. In five minutes, Trudy was four for five when it came to getting quarters. And then there was attorney Adam, who was a man on fire. Remember, this was the task that the usually confident Adam was apprehensive about. These three will definitely get a quarter. It's definitely not going to be what it looks like is going to get it for me. I'm going to have to use something else. That something else was volume. Adam approached the most people in our allotted time. 19 people in five minutes. Give a quarter, I have to make a phone call. Give a quarter, I have to make a phone call. And while more people ignored Adam's request than did for our other participants, he still did well. I have to make a very important phone call and I don't have a quarter. And I'm late and I'm, my job's on the line. Pocketing 12 quarters for his 19 tries. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. But there was something else that Adam often did, as did Dawn, Neil and Trudy, that may have contributed to their success. If you want to be successful, always include one word, because. We showed psychologist Dr. Cialdini what we taped in our unscientific demonstration to see how it measured up against the scientific body of knowledge. I'm an actor, and I got a job on the line, and I'm like, I need a quarter, I gotta make a phone call. I need a quarter because, so the because word is very important. It's always something that augments your success. Always give a reason, you'll be more successful. It's not just saying because that people respond to, but something else. We like the people who are attractive, who are good looking, and we give them deference. We're more likely to succumb to their requests. But if you don't look like Neil and Dawn, don't call the plastic surgeon, because there are factors besides beauty. Studies show that just dressing well can sometimes tip the scales in your favor. It worked for Adam. I'll give you a quarter. You're awesome. You're in a soup, for Christ's sake. Bingo, and there comes the quarter. Now, she said because you're well-dressed, in effect. He's not uh, a model, so he wore a suit and a tie. And research shows, for example, that people follow the directions of those they see who have standing and status. And a suit and tie is one indication of that. So when it came to getting change, everyone did pretty well, with Dawn coming out slightly ahead. And now, with their pockets heavy with quarters, our group went forward to their next task. Have you ever tried to get something just a little bit nicer for the same price? Over the course of a few hours, Trudy, Adam, Dawn, and Neil all checked into the same hotel and tried to get a room upgrade for no additional cost. First, Trudy. I tell you, I have somebody very important coming in, and I have to have uh, an upgrade. Five, six, and three. Okay, they don't exist. Then Adam comes up with the most elaborate story, that he's checking out hotels to possibly bring in bigger business in the future. I'm aware. I'm going to... We have a convention, not this January, but next January. I have to go to a bunch of hotels and pick the ones where they should stay at. So, so I need an upgrade. I need a nicer room. Not only did Adam come up with the convention idea, he actually called in advance and spoke to the director of sales, whose name he uses with a desk clerk. Can you contact Danielle for me? That was inspired. If you do something nice for me now, I may be able to return the favor along the line. Exactly right. That's one of the codes of conduct that we live by. You give and you get in return. Adam did get a nicer room, but it's not clear if it was because of the potential of future business from Adam or because of the 40 bucks extra he paid, not to the desk clerk, but to the hotel for the room. He decided to use Dateline's money for this task. So on our scorecard, not a clear win for Adam, though Adam would beg to differ. Was it the money or was, was it the influence that you were maybe going to give them, throw them a little business? Well, it wasn't later. the money because the money was really, $40 to them is really no big deal at a hotel like that. The rest of the group 
despite some good efforts. And I have a meeting this afternoon with uh, an agent, and I might want to do it here at the hotel. Tried unsuccessfully. I was just wondering if there's any chance I could get a room upgrade. While at the hotel, we also asked for something else. Help from the concierge for the near impossible. Tickets to Saturday night's performance of the sold-out Broadway show, Lion King. Is Damon Alfonsetti here? Again, Adam has done some research, I'm, uh, finding out the name of the concierge, I'm Adam and then paying him a compliment. I'm, uh, what I was told was that you were the best in the business. He said, I've heard that you're the best, that if I ask you, there won't even be a problem because you have such great connections and so on. Does that open the door a little bit or wide open? Wide open for two reasons. Not only is it a compliment, it's a special kind of compliment. It gives this concierge a reputation to live up to. Now, is it cynically transparent or does it work? It seemed to work because we are tremendous suckers for, for flattery and compliments are the only information that are just that is just effective when it false as when it's true. <laughs> okay, is there anyone else you could call possibly? Anyone else possibly you could call? After 10 minutes of steady banter between Adam and the concierge, tickets appear a lost cause. But later, the concierge did call Adam, telling him he could get the tickets with a hefty price tag of $225 each. You had the tickets. It was a definite go. So in the end, Adam's perseverance paid off. But the tickets were too expensive for Dateline's budget, so ultimately he turned them down. My godson is in Hackensack, and I was wondering if you had anything available for Saturday for a blank. The rest of our group struck out with the tickets. How much of this was luck is hard to know. Next, something we all spend far too much time doing, waiting in line. At 15-minute intervals, we separately sent in each of our group to the post office, where their mission was to get to the front of the line. Excuse me, I have a terrible emergency. Can I go ahead of you? No problem. Our senior citizen, oh, Trudy, so without even explaining what her emergency thank is, gets right up front. Lawyer Adam also has an easy time. I have to catch a train in Syracuse. I'm really late. I mean, I couldn't miss a train. I really, really appreciate it. Then male model Neil takes a different tack. Remember, Neil was pessimistic about his chances here. I think it's tough, particularly in New York, uh, because New Yorkers are so used to standing in line. He starts at the back of the line. Stepping outside the line and using Dateline's money becomes a walking ATM machine, doling out singles. Miss, I'm in a real hurry. Can I give you a dollar just to go to the front of the line? This will help to fray your postage. So I'm just going to jump in the front of the line. I'm in a real hurry. What's going on with the Neil Taper? Two things. First of all, giving people something and and asking for something in return, a space in line. So he gave them some. With a sense of good cheer. With a sense of good cheer and surprising them with it. That is, he went right down the line. He didn't wait for them to answer him. He just gave them a, a dollar. Thank you very much. So far, cutting in line's been a breeze for everyone. Surely a woman as pretty as Dawn shouldn't have a problem. Pretty woman walking down the street. But remember, Dawn had told us that this was the one task she dreaded most. I think I'm going to have a problem in that area. Especially women might get upset. <laughs> Who does she think she is? That kind of attitude. Dawn, like Neil, starts at the back. I can't catch a plane. I'm willing to pay money. Can I cut you guys in line? But as Dawn had predicted and feared, she reaches what seems to be an immovable object. I have to catch a plane. Why didn't you come sooner then? A woman who wants nothing to do with Dawn's excuses. If I miss my flight, I'm going to be out like $1,000, and I really need to get home to see my family. Please. Nor Dateline's money that Dawn offers up. I'm willing to pay money. How much do you want? Oh, please. Honestly, how much do you oh, want? go ahead. Thank you so much. Eventually, Dawn does make it to the front, but not with the ease that Neil did. Dawn started at the back of the line. Now, was that a strategic error? It's a strategic error if you start at the back and just give people a chance to think, wait a minute. Why should I say yes to this person? Just because she's pretty? No. Hi, how are you? But being pretty did seem to play to Dawn's advantage in the electronics store. The goal? Get the best deal for a camera priced at $350. Dawn even decides to take off her jacket to play her looks advantage to the fullest. How low can you go for me? But Dawn's also no pushover here. Best you can do? I really want to buy it today. 
she keeps negotiating the price and keeps flirting. So the boss could do better, right? Couldn't the boss do better? You'd make my day, you really would. If you gave me two fifty, I, I could walk out of here so happy. I can. Ultimately, Dawn is offered the camera for two hundred and fifty dollars. Neil, Trudy, and Adam also are sent to the same store the same day, asking for the same camera. Oh, you can do a little better than that, though. Neil ends up with a price of $260. Trudy, who had predicted success at the beginning... That's my hobby. ...ends up less than successful. Is this the best price you can do? Only getting the price knocked down to $300. I need to get a better price, so I have to shop around a little bit. And Adam... Once again, Adam seems to do it all right. How are you doing? Adam Bailey. I heard your store is a really good store. First he flatters, then he builds camaraderie. I was say, Mani, smile, but I guess Speaking I Hebrew to the Israeli salesman and telling him he travels to Israel. Uh, I'm going to Israel February. Then Adam does something else. He pulls out his ammunition, a printout with internet prices for the same camera. I got 189, 189.99. 199, 219, 227. And Adam ends up right off the bat with the same $250 price tag that Dawn had worked so hard to get. What price can you do? 250. You can't go lower than 250. Adam did something in the store. He'd gone on the internet and found best prices. Right. Did that help him? That's very good. Knowledgeable consumer here. I can't pull anything over on this person. If I do, this person might just turn around and walk away. So let's get, let's cut to the chase. Let's get down to the best deal right away. With their shopping behind them, it's time for dinner. We sent our group not to just any restaurant, but to Union Square Cafe, arguably one of the most popular restaurants in New York City, and a restaurant where over the phone we couldn't get a reservation. Each person was asking for a 7.30 reservation for two people. Dawn was sent in first at about 6 p.m. and was fairly confident about her chances here. I've actually gotten seats at restaurants um, just because they want to make the place look more attractive. We haven't had any consolations tonight for dinner uh, around 7.30 for two. That's around 7.30? So being first, being pretty, should work to Dawn's advantage. Really? 10.15? Oh but not tonight. Dawn's going to have to dine elsewhere. Later, you'll find out why the reservation eludes her. Good evening, sir. Five minutes later, Neil comes in. I uh, just thought I'd take a shot at the table tonight. Aren't I'm you sure, nice? I'm sure you're full, but I thought maybe that's hey, a cancellation. I love your perseverance. What time are you? 7.30, okay? And Neil, being nice and friendly, gets a table. A table that Dawn couldn't get just a few minutes earlier. I got to use problem. Do I have your problem? I hear that. Um, this is my car. Uh -huh. Next, here's Adam with a wild story that only Adam could think of. I got a client that came from the Central Europe, Montenegro. A woolly yarn about an important client from a war-torn country who will only eat at this restaurant. I lose a client. It's a lot of money in the line. After about five minutes of looking through his reservation book, the maitre d' comes up with a spot for Adam. Trudy's next at back. I'd like a reservation. I have to have a reservation for 7.30 tonight, please. It, I tell you, it's terribly important. And Trudy gets the reservation as well. So when it comes to eating at a trendy restaurant, Dawn, the person who should have been a shoe in was the only one left without a table. I tried to be as charming as I could be, as nice as I could be. I smiled. I gave him eye contact. What happened? I'm not really sure what happened. I, I, it's hard to say. We wondered, too. So we went back to Union Square Cafe, fessed up to what we'd done, and asked managing partner Paul bowles Beth, who happened to be maitre d'ing the night of our experiment. Don was the only one I refused of your, of your four. Paul said it's his goal to fill every table. And sometimes, contrary to what many people believe, it all comes down to timing and luck. She was just a little bit too early at that point, based on what was on my page. Paul showed us his seating chart from that night, explaining that in between the time Dawn came in, followed quickly by Neil, there'd been a cancellation. And what about Adam's approach? I just need a seat in her too. It's 7.30. I, I owe you my life. It was certainly unique in its intensity. But, says Paul, it wasn't Adam's approach or his made-up story that got him a reservation, but rather a mistake by the restaurant. Someone had written down the same name for two different tables. Um, you might have to sit on someone's lap at 7.30. And as for Trudy, Paul really didn't have a table for her, but gave her a reservation anyway. 
By that time, my night had fallen apart. I had 19 no-shows and 21 last-minute cancellations, and I was willing to gamble, or I don't know whether inside I had just to push over for the elderly. While Paul has seen it all when it comes to getting a table, he says there's one surefire way to make certain you won't be eating at his restaurant. The big thing not to do is to be mean. Generally, someone whose response to what they want is to be aggressive or unfriendly or unkind um, is going to continue that way through dinner and make life difficult for everybody. So when it comes to getting something you really desire, whether it's a better table at the restaurant or maybe getting a raise from the boss, keep in mind that luck, age, looks, tenacity, giving a compliment, giving a reason why, simply being nice can all be factors. Guys, I have to make a very important phone call. And in the end, it seemed as though attorney Adam played upon these factors the most. Though Adam did request that we note that the approach he took to our demonstration is not the way he deals with his legal practice. I think that in the group, Adam won. Adam carried off the most tests. Lucky. Which is what we predicted. That's what I predicted. Yeah. Yeah. Going into this, you thought Adam was going to win. Why? Uh, I thought Adam would win because uh, he had the tenacity to go out and win, and I could tell that just from our initial conversation. Uh, but even with that being said, I underestimated the level of his tenacity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's probably one of my greatest skills. Uh, in fact, sometimes the other side gives up because I'm relentless. I exhaust them. I have to make a phone call. I lost my wallet, and I'm going to get fired. So as you head out on your own daily rounds, looking for that extra something to make life easier, do you have to be unwavering, relentless? You look at these tasks that we set for these people and you realize they came through when they told a little lie. They kind of spun the truth or came up with a version of the truth. Right. Do you have to lie to get what you want? No, you don't. Most of us don't want to lie, and we don't have to. Dr. Cialdini says use your personality. Do what comes naturally to you. Just kick it up a notch. You can give genuine reasons. You can find genuine similarities. You can give uh, people genuine compliments and so on. That's the way to do this, to find those things that are already there in the situation and just raise them to the surface. Are you saying that? Yes. That means that you are an honest guy. You can find out how much you really know about the power of persuasion by taking a special interactive quiz. It's on our website.